everybody and welcome back to another episode of the Knee Slapping K-Pop Podcast. I am Kayla and today I am here with Sammy. Hello. It's been a hot minute since we recorded a podcast. So it has been. It doesn't seem like it has been because we have been like a regular podcast. I mean, we upload schedule, every week. But it's been like a solid month since we've recorded together. And we're going to record like three of these in the next two that's days. just how this podcast works is we have a hard time scheduling us together so when we are free we gotta record all at once but anyway not so much of the two of us no, because two, we are mostly, always talking oh mostly maria <laughs> yes fair enough but yeah so maria is a busy person are, she is us apparently less so less so <laughs> uh, but yes. um we are here to so talk we're bringing about back our history of series. Yes, we try to get at least one of these a year now because we we really we have a lot of other ideas to schedule and... episodes like a year in advance. So we try to slot yes. in one of these per year. So this is what we got this year, and this year is a group that I mean we call them icons. We do. No one else will. No one else will say that, but we do. We they're iconic to us. They're influencers to us. We're truly ahead of their time. Like truly, if we want to talk about honestly. groups too, we're ahead of their time musically. Like a hundred percent, two four K. Like oh, this is two four K. They were revolutionary, but they were not appreciated the time they were around. No, and still not. And it's like we ended up being a weirdly timely group to talk about, considering that they did make a weird resurgence um this year. So, yeah. weirdly a good time to talk about them as well. So we did plan that. I think we we switched out a group for them because we're just like, well, this feels like we the did. correct time to we talk have about like a running. We have a running like list of groups we want to do for this. Yeah. Uh, interestingly, we did already slot in the one group we're definitely trying to do for next year. Right, right. Uh, two, actually. I think we were going to do... I think originally we were going to do Omega X just because of yeah, the whole situation. Yeah, yeah, But we were going we're gonna to let that simmer a little wait. bit longer. We're going to wait a little bit on Omega X, yeah. And then the other one, the one we're definitely going to do, so that one we're probably going to do next year. And the right. one we were going to do next year, this uh, is the first girl group. Right, right. Which is which will end up being next year. And we might, I don't know, we might say that at the end of the episode, who knows. But uh, um, Yeah, so to tune in sometime in 2024 <laughs> to hear us talk about a girl group on this um, The history of a girl history group. History of a girl group for the first because time Because weirdly, ever. honestly, if you want history of K-pop girl groups, there's dozens of channels that'll do it. There's and none of, of them that. will do a boy group. But guess what? No one's out here talking about 2, 4K. So here nope. we are. Nope. Nope. I feel like that's just really why we have a podcast is for us to talk about the things that no one else is talking about. So for us to I mean that's weird- kind of the point. For us to weirdly give the same recognition to boy groups that yes. uh, other podcasts do to girl groups exactly. because absolutely they deserve. Exactly. Deserved. So All right. we love so to 24K. call 24K a ship of Theseus group um, because they are. They are yes. truly the definition of a ship of Theseus group. For people who don't know what that means, uh, the ship of Theseus is like this entire like philosophical theory on how if you start with a ship and you remove and replace each part of the ship one at a time until you have a ship made of completely new parts, is it still the same ship as it was in the beginning? So that is, we call a K-pop group a ship of Theseus group. When members have come and gone in the group to the point where there are no original members left in the group and is it really the same group we started off with? Um, and you know what? Who's to s- I have not seen as clear an example of that yeah. as 24K. Because you look at the 24K that started, mm-hmm. and you look at the 24K in their relative prime. Right. Relative prime. As much <laughs> as a prime as 24K will ever have, really. And now you look at the 24K that we are left with, you are dealing with a very different landscape of people i think what makes it group yeah and i think what makes it like the most startling about 24k in comparison to like other groups like brave girls or like um reyna or other groups that are also ship at theseus theseus groups is that there was also a concept shift when the new new members of 24k started coming in so i think well the other girl like girl groups have sort of maintained like a relatively similar concept like we are like 24k part two is not making the same music at all that original 24k was ever making it's an op it's truly almost seems like an opposite concept but Mm -hmm. we will so to start at the beginning yes 
A very good place to start. Mm -hmm. Uh, It actually begins in 2012, all the way back there, over 10 years ago at this point. 2 k is an old group, guys. 2 k is an old group. Given that the members look like they're 10, but I, I mean, continuing on. We'll get I to mean, it. I don't even know how old some of them were back when original 24K In 2 4 k was debuting. Honestly speaking, they might have been 10 because some of those kids, I, I don't know if we have confirmed ages for some of we them. We don't. Because I don't but think they we can't, do. But they can't be over like 22. Yeah. But, so, in... 2012, prior to the official debut of the group 24K, there was an acoustic pop subunit called 4K, even though this was before you could get 4K videos, uh-huh. uh, debuted, consisting of vocalists Corey, Sukjun, Kisu, and Sungo, and they relieved Rock- released Rocking Girl in June of 2012. Now, I looked up this video. There is... No official, there is, you can get one, one person, apparently 24K Russia uploaded this, uh, a copy of that music video. You cannot find it officially just, put on the internet anymore. Just gone from the internet. Just gone. Mind you, the, that, it's so forgotten. Currently that re-upload has 96 views. It was posted oh, six years my ago. God. I looked it up because I had I vaguely remember That's it crazy. and I Yeah, and it's all Russian subtitled. Oh my god. Wild. Wild. So really got to go into like, the, the we're, archives we're out of the he- internet for that one. We're really out here discovering the K-pop lost media. Oh, yeah. Like, this shit is what the real K-pop lost media is. It's not like, you know, randomly re-uploading a music video. No, no, no. There's shit that, like, is not possible to find. Now, the pre-debut 24K subunit on um, 24K Russia is where Acoustic, we're at. Uh, the, yeah, the acoustic pre-debut pop 24K sub-unit. acoustic pop subunit. And so later... In 2012, um, on September 6th, they make their official debut with the addition of other members, Dale and Byung-ho, where they released their first mini-album, Hurry Up. So that's official, official That's their official of debut. 24K. You can still find that. It's not like K-pop lost media. Mm-hmm. And what I will say, that song, a very much an... I, I've listened to a bunch of 2-4K today just to, like, Get put myself in the, in the mindset. Mood, yeah. It's a mood. And that, that music is so current for being over 11 years old. Oh, yeah. It's weirdly kind of what I want current K-pop. Like, if, if K-pop current K-pop boys are going to do noise music, uh-huh. I want them to do 24K noise oh, music. Because yeah. it's loud as shit. It's aggressive. It's almost abrasive. Right. Which I know I've used to describe a lot of current K-pop boy groups. Abrasive. It's almost abrasive. But one, it's more melodic. There's more actual singing in it. But also, it's still loud as shit. It's yeah. still noise. It's noise. That's what really, I think, what the 2-4-K style was. It was your loud noise. noise music that sounds like it was made in a construction site. And that was literally the big trend in 4th gen boy music. Like a music. techno construction site. Yeah. But, like, still a construction site. Mm-hmm. It's still, like, what I think a lot of current K-pop boys are doing. Go listen to Hurry Up and tell me that, like, you couldn't... S- the weird thing with it is that there's too much singing, I think, for current K-pop boys is the thing. Uh-huh. I would say, you could you not see, like, a Stray Kids doing it? And my thing is that there's too much singing. It's n- not enough rapping. Yeah. But it's the, the, the actual beat to it sounds correct. Right. And so then in 2013, they released Are You So Cute on August 1st, which is sort of them, the the very common second to early third gen thing of just releasing your your stereotypical track and then releasing the cutest, the cutest, most cute thing you've ever seen. Mm-hmm. Most bubblegum pop thing imaginable. Right. It's less stereotypical sound, but um, I remember that Vix used to do this every, oh, every every comeback, every other comeback, and it would have been around the same time that they would have started doing it. It's a very second gen thing where you release, you know, hide, and then you do uh, like are you great doll, too? Yeah, and like all of this, and then you do love equation, like right in the yeah. middle of like eternity and like chained up, like all of that stuff where you. 
That's like the yeah. was a very second gen thing to do was to yeah. go back and forth concepts, especially with like the that. boys, like yeah. drastic concepts. Yeah. yeah, especially if your main concept was either dark or abrasively loud. Like BAP would do it too, or like right. super early BAP would do it. And I think it's just to you know show contrast, show uh, versatility, right. It's a very common thing at the time, and I they don't no no one does that anymore. Mm-hmm. Kind of miss it. I know it's kind of sad. Yeah. Then again, I feel like right now it would just be with. I also think that I maybe just my clouding of just like with the way albums are now, everyone kind of wants the next album to be the best thing you ever put out. Uh Like, you aren't allowed to just sort of have an ebb and flow of concept. You just kind of have to, like, try to one-up yourself every time. And, like, Are You So Cute was never going to, like, one-up their aggressive song. Like, that's not too... No. And I really think that they thrive in the more noisy concepts as well. Oh, absolutely. That's, like, really what the members had always been good at. And I know um, some of the members, like, Corey, I think, was also very involved in, like, the production and the music writing and stuff. And Mm -hmm. he wrote a lot. He was, like, way more involved in sort of that style of music, at least from what I remember of it. I mean, even when you watch it like there's only so cute that these members can even make it the song is bubblegum sweet but you can still kind of hear that they're not as not comfortable it's not their strengths they're not playing to their strengths all right so then after um that they um dale in 2014 it goes on to participate on the mnet show dancing nine and then they take a full two-year hiatus. They take a full two-year hiatus. They take a full two-year hiatus from You Are So Cute to Hey You in 2015. And then we add two more members, Hui and Jin Hong. And I do think this is really where members are going to start leaving and coming it's at gonna like, re- rapid pace. Yeah, it's going to be a very interesting time. Because I think by this point, because we have a full chart for this. By this point, they added two. So we're still... Weirdly, they only... Like, they added uh two more. Sorry. Because they already had their, like, little acoustic subunit. There's more people added. It just start, starts to become... We sort of enter what is... How does one say? The semi-golden era of 24K, where they're releasing things consistently. And it's the same, like, loud, abrasive style... Which is starting to become slightly more the vibe in 2015 as opposed to 2012. Because I feel like in 2012, no one was really doing that. In 2015, they also have their comeback with Superfly on October 1st. Love and Superfly, Superfly oh my song. god, I love They're Superfly. <laughs> Honestly, Superfly is a song that I genuinely think could have been made today. Oh, absolutely. Maybe not as a title track. Right. But, like, on an album somewhere or is, like, the a, a promoted track or some shit, yeah. I think Superfly could be made today and could would still be considered a banger. Oh, it's so good. It's such a good song. Oh, my God. It's so good. Honestly, we keep saying go listen to all the groups that we make these history of videos for. Mm-hmm. 24K is... Nah. K and K is up there too, but like two four K is one of them that I really feel like people that that the the least amount of people might have heard. Yeah, honestly, I do like think 24- in a way, yeah, because I feel like um, I think K and K definitely is also with the semantic era thing. I think a lot of people went back to listen to K and K. Um, uh, but I don't like uh, no one needed to go back to listen to two four K. Right, and it's like uh, who even knows how many people even discovered them from peak time to begin with, and that was essentially not two four K to begin with. So it's like even though even if they were learning about that group, it's like you go back and listen to two four K, and it's like okay, but this is essentially a different group not with the different people that music. I was looking yeah, like, at. Like it's just different. Like the weird thing with it is I know that 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 two four K group. The new, the new ship of Theseus 24K mm-hmm. has made music, but you, you just look up 24K. I, it, I had to look for it to find new 24K. 
mm-hmm. old two for like your super flies, your the songs we're gonna get to, even your hurry ups, that kind of stuff appears right. instant. That is the two four K that YouTube knows. Mm-hmm. That is above the peak time two four. That's above all of it. Oh yeah. Let's be honest. The two four K that you get first is the Bruno Mars two four K. Let's be honest. Mm-hmm. But then it's the old two four K. It's just very interesting that like this is the this is two four K. At its core, this is what that group was, kind of still is, and what people remember from them. Right. And what was them kind of at their most successful in their own relative way? Yeah, I do think um, this is like we're in like we're we're in and nearing like what will be their peak career wise. And yes, it's kind of sad that that's never really um, super high to begin with. No, but I will give it this at least to us and to a. Because I have brought up 24K to certain people, and, like, they're not a group that people look... With how low things like album sales and everything else, and what all the members have done individually, it's not been the highest highs. Mm -hmm. But what I'm saying is that, like, they made an impact in a way that I think a lot of groups that were contemporaries on their level didn't. And I think that's sheer talent and sheer just also luck of just somehow having, like, noise music before it became the dominant sound. Like, it's truly an insane thing of, like, this is the, truly speaking, the best noise music ever made was made before noise music was a thing. Mm -hmm. (laughs) By 24K. Yeah. So I will say, it is one thing that, for as low as their recognition, it said they didn't get any recognition for it. Mm Mm-hmm. I think the there you can't say they had no impact. Right. It's not a huge impact, and I know I'm just trying to like sugarcoat like this is a forgot they're a forgotten new group kind of, but at the end of the day, it's better than nothing. Like they did. They're do. getting one of these episodes, yep. and there's a lot of groups that won't even get that. And it's like so also here at like their peak, um, 2016, they do a European concert tour, um, which started That's in. That's not nothing. It started in Warsaw, Poland, um, but without Sungo, he was not there. And then went on to held a showcase in Malaysia, April 22nd through 24th, um, with both Sungo and Dale not being present. And I'm including this unit because it will be important later. It will be relevant. Hold, because, give us a moment. <laughs> because on August 1st, um, Cho and Entertainment makes a statement that Dale and Sungo will be on hiatus. Sungho, because he's retrie- uh, receiving medical treatment for a dislocated shoulder, and Dale had chosen to take a personal leave, although it was later discovered that Dale had left the group to debut as a solo artist under the name <laughs> Big One. Um, yes. They also revealed in this statement that two new members of the group, Chang Sun and Hong Sub, would add it, and they would continue as a seven-member group. So quite a lot wanna, of things to drop. Quite in, a lot of things happened. In um, one statement. One st- it, was a, it was a long statement. Also, I would like to point out, this is where we're really going to get confusing with the member. Yes. Uh, in and out. Oh, yes. If you would like to follow along, there's a very helpful graphic on the Wikipedia. Mm-hmm. Very helpful graphic if anything just starts to get confusing. Yes, yes. Because it, it's going to it's gonna get ridiculous in a minute. Uh-huh. <laughs> but, so, yeah, they all leave. Uh, and then on December 7th, they do a... They continue their tour. They go to four Brazilian cities, then go back and continue their European tour in four European cities. Which, again, I love how poorly put together some K-pop concert schedules are. Because why are we bouncing? Why are we just always bouncing? Mm -hmm. Uh, And then they get what I think is maybe their biggest comeback. Because in 2017, on August 11th, they released Still 24K. Right. And between still 24K and then Bingo, yep, you're dealing with the 24K songs. Those are really um, those are the, the songs. ones they are known for the most. I think Superfly comes in at like a close third. Yeah, yeah, but, but like still those... 24K and Bingo, like impeccable. I think top tier K-pop songs. Top tier, absolutely top tier. 
maybe Superfly might edge it out in terms of like general like popularity wise. I think more people may have heard to uh, Superfly. Uh huh. Because I think someone has covered Superfly. Probably it's not some. I feel like I've heard of a cover of Superfly, not a cover of the other two. But because how do you cover a song called Still Two Four K when you're not Two Four K? Right. But realistically speaking. Still Super Gay and Bingo are the highlights of their career. Absolutely love everything about them. Mm -hmm. Impeccable. No notes. Just incredible. Incredible, actually. Mm -hmm. And then they continue it on with Only You, which is like... Also still a pretty good song. Banger. Absolute banger. It's, it's one that I feel like it's forgotten about because I do think by this point in time... Unfortunately, 2-4-K is kind of on, like, the downhill a downward slope, which yeah. is really sad that they hit the peak so fast and then immediately and then just started f- the downhill. I mean, let's be honest. The peak was not too high. The peak was a hill, not so much a, uh-huh. a, a peak. But, yeah, realistically, it, they were starting to be... Because, like, think about where K-pop is in 2017. Right. Like, 2017 is a massive... Uh, 2017 is a massive year for K-pop. Like, that's the year you get, like, like to put into context, uh, that's the year of DNA. That's, I think, the, the year of the, like, pure American explosion. Oh, yeah. That is, like, not, like, that it wasn't growing, but I think when it becomes, like, a like a global industry with a lot of attention to it, and also where it sort of becomes this echelon of like where it becomes like you can know about like i feel like there was a point where k-pop was if you knew about k-pop you knew about a lot of different k-pops yes, right yes like you were a fan of you weren't necessarily just even if you were a fan of just one group right, right. even if i was like early second gen even if i was just a shiny fan i knew about the other groups and that they existed yeah I think you're entering 2017 where you are getting to the point where you can just be a BTS fan. You don't need to care about anybody else. And or I you can just be a Black Pink fan. Yeah, or I, just a Twice fan. I feel fan. like that has to do all with the fact with the oversaturation of the industry yes. these days. Where it just, which feels like it's weird, right? Because given just the sheer amount of groups... It feels yeah. like it should be easier to listen to more groups, but because it's there's so many, it's so overwhelming that it's like, well, I'm going to listen to these few handful that I know of, but I can't, yeah. I don't have the energy to keep up with just like the general scheme of K-pop because that... there's just too much here now. And, and I think and I feel also like on- definitely back in like sort of this, um, I feel like 20, I'd say 2014 through like 2017, 18 era. Mm-hmm. If you were into like new goo boy groups, like you were into multiple new all of boy them. groups. Yeah. Oh it my was god! Very it was easy so to many keep of track them. of the new goo boy groups and like oh the, yeah, in like the second, third gen, it was very easy to keep track of them and like learn more about them. And I also think on the other side of that, I think that it also reached the point where a lot of the new fans to K-pop weren't necessarily K-pop fans; mm-hmm. they were just fans of popular like pop music fans right because you it is much easier for someone who's listening to just i'm gonna generalize but like who like really likes american popular music you're taylor swift you're not at the time but like olivia rodrigo like popular artists Mm -hmm. to bring in a bts where it's very easily accessible blackpink very easily accessible nothing too deep you have to go into and you just like add them to the music repertoire that you already have as opposed to I feel like before, which is when K-pop was a little, was more inaccessible. You had to look yeah. for it. Then you're like in with more of it. Like you're far more well edged. And that's the other thing I've seen about with like a lot of very casual K-pop fans. Mm-hmm. I feel like people that got into it super, when it was inaccessible, had to like kind of get up to speed really fast. Right, right. Which is why I kind of don't hold it against like these baby K-pop fans that are trying. Because it's like, you, you don't this, have to learn. At this point in time, there's just so much. Like there's, there's so, so much. much. And also you kind of just go in. There's so much to get to get up to speed with. Yeah. And also like if you don't, you kind of don't have to. Right. And it's like there's so much sort of going on in current K-pop that – you don't even have time to look at what was happening in past K-pop no. a lot of the time. It's like, there's just, yeah. you're getting presented with so much stuff, like, currently that, yeah, it's like, and I can't like, blame you people don't... for not wanting to look into the groups that don't even exist that, anymore. And before that, it was, 
it was just such like a smaller community of people Mm -hmm. that like you kind of had because if you're talking to like a couple people you kind of there's not as many people to talk to so you kind of had to keep up with what everybody was doing Mm -hmm. just because some people are going to make a reference here reference there you kind of just think now it's so easy to get into one niche of k-pop be like well i only like you know it's so easy to get into the niche of i only like sm groups or i only like new very specific new goo girl groups and you'll have no idea what's going Mm -hmm. on with new goo boy groups or what's going on with x other company or what's going on in this corner or that corner if you only like the noise music groups there's no reason for you to know what the girl crush groups are doing like there's just you're never gonna come across it where i felt like it, it used to be you would just come across things and like that's no one's fault it's just a different industry Mm -hmm. than before so it's like and i do think that the the issue with that is i think a lot of groups like your two four k's and groups of that level kind of fall by the wayside Mm -hmm. they don't since no one's able to stumble across anything you're only getting the small niche of people that's gonna go look for you right and there's very few people that are gonna go look for new goo groups that I'm sorry, and we make jokes about it all the time, that we're scared are just going to disappear in a year. Oh, yeah. No one wants to put their love into something that's going to disappear no on them. No one wants that. That's emotionally exactly. devastating. It, it, it Don't worry. Is. We know this. And we know. And I know we say this having, um like now been really into groups from survival shows that do have like a specific set date but like i feel like it's different but like there's a when difference there and when i know it, it's it's different when you go and expecting it and then when you go in and you look at a group and they're just so not well funded or promoted that you know they're just gonna disappear the worst is when they drag you along for years go on a two-year hiatus oh, to a awful. four-year hiatus randomly appear back in your life like a like a a dip like an estranged uh, father every couple yeah, of years. It's terrible. Like that's like a more emotionally devastating than a group that I know is gonna end and then they're all gonna go do their own thing. I know. I'll take a thousand wanna ones over just like a group that disappears for four years. Oh, absolutely. It's heartbreaking. It's terrible. But yeah, that's that that's our rant on the current state on the of current K-pop state and how of it K-pop, relates you know, to 4K. And how it, to, it all comes back to 2-4K. It always it, comes back to 2-4K. All right. Weirdly, a lot of things on this podcast come back to 2-4K. We, we do name drop 2-4K a lot more than um, right. we have any right to. <laughs> I mean, let's be honest. That JYP show that just aired, I just called 2-4K for a while. Yeah. It is, I also I called mean, it A24 for A24 a while. but like 2 4 k yeah. <laughs> It's fine. It's fine. Don't worry about it. All right. So we're now in 2017 of 24K's career. So on no- yes. right, so our post only you come back. On November 2nd, um, Cholin makes a statement that's saying, as of July 6th of that year, we had officially left the group. And it was also confirmed that Dale was no longer a member and that Sungo's future with the company was to be discussed after he completes his mandatory military service. So... So now we're getting mandatory military service. We're hitting military years. So we're hitting military. So they're going to be apparently gone for limited periods of time. Yep, yep. We're hitting like everyone's leaving. Yep. So a little little side tangent on Dale, who had left. He then um, will start going by the stage name Big One, and he will go on Show Me the Money 6 after leaving 24K. And also, I love when K-pop rappers leave, decide to go by a stage name, and then you never, th- and then you just we sort don't of see him again. Forget that. No, they're still doing a lot of things. He's probably being more successful. But you forget than that he ever was a K-pop and then you idol. Forget that they were in here. Happened a lot with Zia, a group we Zia. also need to do oh. one of these on. Oh, we really should do a Zia one. We really should. It would, would be, be exciting. That crazy. Would be crazy because the individual careers would take it up would the whole sp- of the like five people who waited out a Zia very successful would take up the entire episode. Oh, it would be a spiral. Yep. But yeah. So um, also I could I don't I couldn't really get great information on it, but also in 2017 the remaining six members of the group will go on um the survival show Mix Nine, one of our favorite survival shows. <laughs> well, another thing we name drop all the every, time because too episode. many people have been on that show. But I Look, don't think but- any of them passed the auditions for Mix Nine. I don't believe so. So crazy. Um. That they just also, were there and immediately it's not It's wild there. to me how, it's wild to me that they wanted to mix name and not the unit, which was hilarious because mm-hmm. both of those shows just like, it's, it's Snake 
to each other's tails somehow. Yes. Like they were, it's like a double, um, like a double snake eating its own tail. It was crazy. Only they're eating each other's tails yeah. because like they're just taking each other's casts, uh, which is the most wild thing about both of those shows. I know. Because half of each of those casts should have switched for the concept because for the people that don't know, Mix 9 was going to be YG's survival show where he did, were they like not debut idols or just like um super early was, into it career whoever, it was whoever really um, it was whoever but the unit was specifically the unit was that they specifically wanted already debuted debuted idols jyp was or yg was kind of taking whoever he could get he whoever show, but also yeah. they took a bunch of already debuted idols right while the unit ended up with a bunch of people that hadn't debuted yet and i'm like just switch those people then the shows make more sense yep very weird I don't know. Uh, so then in 2018, we're at around 2018 territory, Hui goes on the survival show Idol Producer. Mm-hmm. Another thing we name drop every day because produce is the bane of our existence. Yep. And it's coming back. Yep. Here we are. Here we are. Of course. And he was eliminated in episode eight. Which is pretty far. Which is very far in the show, surprisingly. Pretty far into the show, yeah. at least second elimination. At least. I think so. Which would be in, like, the 50s to 30s? Something in that range. Something like that. Yeah. It's at least above, like, the... No, it might be the... It's probably the 70s to the 50s. Mm Mm-hmm. Is what I'm thinking. So, like, that's not the worst. Right. For a member of 24K. (laughs) Mm Mm-hmm. It's very interesting because, um... Every, all of these K-pop boys that go on these shows in China, yeah, K-pop boys and girls do not do well. No, the K-pop <laughs> connection doesn't. One, it's not aired right. on the show, and it gives you nothing. I know. It probably would hurt you because one, it's not aired on the show, and the people that know probably want you to go back to your group. Mm-hmm. And then the other part of it is that. They might be like, well, they're already celebrities, so why would I vote for them? Yeah, that's it's always like, like I feel like double, it's a double edged the- sword situation. <laughs> I feel like specifically in China, it always hurts. Oh yeah, in Korea, it's like a fifty fifty. Sometimes you end up on like a newest, right? Sometimes you end up with like a or like a hot shot, which half worked, right? And then sometimes you end up with cipher. Yeah, poor Kaita. I know. Well, now oh. he's an even, so it's all fine. It's fine. He he's fine. Also, uh, spoilers, we're gonna do a- we're talking about Rain Company soon. Okay. Oh god, Rain Company. <laughs> we're talking about oh, that man, soon. Oh what a I... time for that company. If you ever want to hear us angry, oh, boy. come back for that yep. episode. Yep, yep. All right. All right. I feel like I do remember talking about Hui being on Idol Producer, like, because I feel like I didn't know- I think we mentioned because it. Because I feel like he, like, auditioned and then he said he was from 24K and I'm like, that's crazy. I didn't know he was I here. Know. But there were so many other people on Idol Producer that I did not remember. The thing with that is that, I'm sorry, he was not out, like, in terms of people on Idol Producer that, like, made an impression, one, it wasn't him, and two- I was, I feel like that show is like sensory overload. Far too many also, people I on am, that show. I am listening to his audition. Uh-huh. It is not good. Oh no. <laughs> but, but, do you want to know a performance he is in? What is he in? He's in Half Beast Human. Oh, great. Oh, I love that. That's so fun for him. What a song that is. That's a song I didn't remember until right now. Is he in the group with Buffon? Or- no, he's not. He's in the other oh, one. Oh, not the Less Buffon. Fun. That's why, okay, that's why I never would have That's why I he's never would have gotten Buffon there. One. The Buffon one infinitely that's better. That's the only one I remember. All Buffon right. and Icon. <laughs> We're going to get to the, some, back to, but we Back to the several tangents we've made already on this episode. Back and to we're the, only the in 2018, worst. which is actually a crazy thing that happened to them. A thing that if you told me would have happened, I'd be like, are you sure you're talking about 2 4 Yes, it's crazy that it happened to a K-pop group, and it's crazy that it was 2 4 um, to begin with, and nobody else. I think that's what it is, is that it was literally 2 4 is the only K-pop Weirdly, group for this happened to. If it if it had happened to more K-pop groups, it would be more be like, normal. Yeah, sure, but it was only 2 4 And so this is, of course, for people who clearly know this situation already, on May 9, 2018, it was revealed that 24K was the only idol group put on the blacklist by former South Korean President Park Gun-hee. The impeached president put together a blacklist of celebrities to exclude them from receiving any support from the state. 
Its existence was made known on October 2016 before the president's impeachment, with the full list being uncovered in April. A representative of the blacklist declared um, that it consisted of those who expressed any sort of support against the government commands about the Sowell accident and artists who supported presidential candidates Park Wansu and Moon Jae-in. Um, so this blacklist included their former manager and members Suk Jun Byung-ho, Corey Kisu, and Dale. Crazy that they got put Wild. on a government Wild. blacklist. A government blacklist. By also, an impeached president. Yes. Also, mind you, I want to point out that the, the that Korean president that we're talking about yeah. is the female president of Korea that is the inspiration of for female president the K-pop song. That yeah. was the whole the big female Crazy. empowerment the, the the big female empowerment vibe of yeah. like the mid 2010s in K-pop. That's because of their first female yeah. president, which was this her. Female president and then her whole impeachment who, scandal. Yeah, was the whole who was thing. definitely also like a nepotism corrupt, pre- corrupt nepotism president, very corrupt yeah. president. Yeah, <laughs> very corrupt nepotism president. Yep. Look it up on your own time, guys. It's a wild story. I loved being in K-pop around wild that era because, time like, to be what into the K-pop. <laughs> also, weirdly, uh, looking at the American politics of the following years, very fun. How it's just oh. Impeachment, impeachment just keeps yeah of course of course impeachment the word of the decade mm-hmm. but yes um probably the most interesting so thing K of was blacklisted by the government <laughs> mind you i like to point out that it's specifically apparently i one i would like to just um just absolutely take out the part where i think personally the part where they said uh express any support against the government commands for the say well accident mm-hmm. i think that's just a bluff personally because everybody hated how the government did anything about the Saywall accident if you blacklisted everyone that said shit about the government after that you'd blacklist everybody Mm -hmm. just saying i think it's more the supporting other presidential candidates which is a worse accusation yeah absolutely all of these are bad reasons to blacklist people they're very unjust and truly beyond the time but one of those is like political retribution Mm-hmm. The other one is still political reputation, but, like, more of a reason. More of a neutral reason to do it. Uh-huh. Wild times. It all comes back to Sewol. Uh-huh. It all comes... Every, everything that happened in Korea in the late 2010... Uh, yeah, the late 2010s all goes back to Sewol. So does part of our cults video. Oh, yeah, we'll get there. We're gonna we'll get, get there, there later this all- month. <laughs> But it all goes, it co- somehow the Saywell accident was mentioned in that. And I'm like, how? Mm-hmm. It all comes back to this. Uh, yes. So it was very funny to also hear the current members of 24K on peak time. Because they mentioned this incident. And like, and like no offense to them. But this had nothing to do with them. Nothing. Literally none this, of them had any part of this situation at all. None of them were in 24K when this happened. So like technically their name was blacklisted uh-huh. but like they weren't mm-hmm. i don't know it was just a very interesting thing to hear current 24k talk about this incident because like they had none of it was about them right it's a thing that's a it's one of those ship of theseus questions of like i mean technically it happened to 24k but like not this 24k uh-huh so can they really is it for them to talk about? And it's like, I don't know. I mean, yes and not. Yes, yes and, and no. no. Because are they 24K? Well, who's to say? Who knows? That depends on your opinion on the very hypothetical ship of Theseus f- psychological question. Uh-huh. Which, do- which by like the correct logic doesn't have an answer because it's a philosophical question. Mm-hmm. There's no such thing as a right answer. So I'm just confused. Cra- yeah. Um, I still I don't, don't even know really what what to call the what's the, the answer? Se- season two a two four K. Is it? Se- yeah, it's kind of season two. I think that's there what is they, a very I think clear that's what they dist- brand it is they say once all of these people start leaving, they're like two four K season two coming soon. Because like not only are they out of like original members, they're also out of like season like. The first round of introduction members are also gone. Yeah. Like, there's a lot of people gone. Um, what else are we at? So then we, okay, here we are. 
So then, it, uh, also in 2018, on May 11th, the company announced that member Kisu would be enlisting in the military to carry out, to carry out his military service, while the group would again change the lineup and add new member Ki Young. Yeah. Who, I think at this point, where is he in this? Oh, no, there's someone else that's still there. I thought for a second he was, like, the longest-serving member. So, the, yeah, Chan, Chan Sung is, the, is, the kind of, the, is technically the is longest one in here, but is he still in the group? Kind, Who knows? Kind of? Kind of yes, kind of kind no? Kind of, yeah. Who's to say, really? But it's between, if you want to count it, the oldest-serving member is either Ki Young or Chan Sung. Right. Those are the two options. Mm-hmm. I don't know how you want to distinguish this because I don't know if they're still in the group. Yeah, I don't. I don't know either. But then on May 25th, they released Bonnie and Clyde. Bonnie and Clyde, great song. <laughs> Love that song too. Great song. I mean, so, not, all our complaints yeah. about 24K, none of them are about the music. No, no, no complaints about the music in 24K. Only great things about the music. Yes. Though I will say it is very funny that we are really starting to get to the point where we're kind of we're really, done with the music. Yes, we and so we're of 2019. We're gonna hit the mass exodus of 24K members. Yeah, and also I do think we've hit the point where I think we're done with the music. The music is over. There's no more music. Um, Bonnie and Clyde is our yes. is our in a way goodbye song. We are gonna have no more music until we hit the the members of 24K two. that are on peak time and like what little music which that will not be until 2021 mm -hmm. and also is a very difficult song to find yes also um just different we'll get different we'll get to different the differences vibes. but mind you we are currently in currently as in the timeline in 2018 we will not get music until 2021 so let's go let's go so, Let's go. 2019, um, we're going to start January 25th. The company announced that Corey, who is the leader, will be leaving 24K since his exclusive contract with the company had expired, and he will pursue a career as a producer with his new stage name, Corbin. They also stated Sungo would not continue as a member of the group and will st instead work under Chone Entertainment as a music producer later in June of that year. They also announced Jin Hong's not renewing his contract. Hong Sub will not be able to continue due to health reasons, and Jungkook chose to concentrate on solo work. Additionally, Kisu announced on his Twitter that he will not return to the group either. And then the company shared that they will add new members and describe it as 2-4-K season 2 coming season soon. Season 2. Oh, boy. So then in 2020, because we're still in the no music years, on April 2nd, the company announced that uh, a new member named uh, Do Joon uh, joined the group. Then on May 26th, the four remaining members of 24K had announced that a hidden member number five later t revealed to be Yumin and Dujun had left, citing personal differences. We never got Yumin's name. Nope. Officially. No, he we, was a So we only get Yumin's name after he leaves later. 24K and then becomes a trainee in A Plus Entertainment and is the leader yes. of the group there. Like, we just, like, yes. we just get this mysterious person who was member number five <laughs> who also decided to join but then had back joined and then immediately left immediately yep. decided this is not for me and left yep yep so then on december 23rd photos of a new member were published and his name was young womb mm -hmm. so 2020 was just announcing two people at, came in, announcing they both left, and then announcing another person. Mm -hmm. That's all they did in 2020, officially. Yeah. Uh, and then in 2021, uh, Chan Sung goes on to join Wild Idol Extreme Debut, ranks first, and debuts in the group Tan. Yeah. So he's currently inactive of 24K. That's why yep. we say that we don't know if, if is it Chan Sung is the, like current longest reigning member of 24k right because mind you if we're looking at the math here technically speaking since chansung joins in i believe 2016 mm -hmm. he's the only member if you count him that has been in like official two in like golden age 24k projects uh-huh because he's in 2016, so that means he was in still 24K. He was in all of that stuff. So if you count him as still being involved, 
mm-hmm. we have one member from the Golden Age left because uh, Keyung joins in May of twenty. 20- Joins in May of 2018, so he's only in Bonnie and Clyde so far. Yep. So really, we're like, oh, so it's it's those two and then all new. Yep. Yep, yep. All so right. then, oh, God, there's more. In 2022, mm-hmm. on April 28th, it's announced that member Young Woong, who, mind you, just joined, uh, would be leaving the group and that 24K would be working hard to find new members that would be revealed in the future. Yep. Mind you, by this point, they had not released music in four years. Nope. No music yet. No music. Just members. Just members. And so then later, um, in July 2022, we get Yuma and Takaru as new members of 24K. And that's that's um, essentially the, the season two 24K concept that we have going on here. Yep. Um, and so then after that, we, we, I think we release music in between that period of we time and going one on peak, song. one song. I found it again. Cause I always forget what it's called. It's called welcome to main street. Yep. It has the lowest budget I've ever seen in my life. Yep. Yep. There's five of them. They look like children. It's it. The concept is rap toddler is what I call it. Uh huh. <laughs> it's the, there's a lot of rap. But it's also a lot of auto-tune. Yep. And it's also just very cute and everything that, nothing that 24K stood for is in this. It's like a, it's like, yeah, we're in like the cutish concept. We're not doing the hard-hitting noise music anymore. Even Um, though this is the era for it. It is. We have all new members. It's just like, is, is, is like, do, is this 24K anymore? Who knows? That's, that's the that's the moral, we don't even... moral dilemma we're at. Is is this two four K or is this not two four K? Because like we got one kid that was in Bonnie and Clyde, and that's as two four K as we got. Mm-hmm. Nothing else. No, nothing else. And so then, on February fifteenth of this year. The group joins peak time in the rookie category and then got eliminated in the first elimination round. I am thankful for one thing and one thing only. Mm-hmm. That they were rookies. Yeah. That they did not oh pretend that this was too for that they did not put these children in the senior category as if they are ten year ten years in the business level. I am so thankful that they put them been in the rookie an category. Insult literally to me. Literally so thankful they put them in the rookie category. Like I don't know what I would because do if they tried to pass this off as uh senior boy two four K. I'd be so angry. It would actually so, be quite a disgrace to everyone else who has ever been in 24K. It's really, de- it would be so depressing if we attempted to, like, pass this off as this is 24K. I know. The other thing with this I want to say is that I'm I'm very interested, because this group, having gotten very little out of peak time, to be honest, uh, because they were eliminated in the first round, didn't do, ex- I wouldn't say didn't do extremely well. Right. They did, so I don't, there has been, like, no announcement of them doing any more music. There's been, like, no announcement of anything. hmm I wonder what the future for this group holds. But now I do want to get to the philosophical question, which is. Yep. I know that you kept, you, you kept just adding people to 4K to keep the name recognition, right? Right. I'm sorry. Is the name recognition of 24K in 2023 really that worth it? Yeah, I don't think it is. It's like, at a certain point know in time, they... I feel like we've reached, like, diminishing returns. Like, it's, you're, mm-hmm. it's like, where it's like, you're better off just debuting a new boy group. Like, why, no. why are we clinging on to 24K, which, and I mean, we love 24K, but a group that never really had much name popularity to begin and with and let's put on a blacklist like and not just that but like what you're doing is setting these boys up to just be compared to 24k which they're not mm-hmm. even if they were equally as good just the change in concept kind of puts like it puts a level of like okay what is this to the few fans 24k even had so like i think it just sets up this group for failure uh-huh 
not so much failure, but it sets them at a disadvantage. I don't know. It's weird. It's like, it's, it's such a wild career they've had. It is. And, and like, I, I hope. I do think in the- a way they are like the group we've covered so far who had like, I don't want to, I don't know actually, because it's like they, they never had a peak. Like they had a peak, which was not a, it was yeah. like a musical peak, but not really a peak in any other Popularity sense peak. of the way. But I guess they did do a, like a European tour twice. So that's got to count for something. Yeah. So. It's something. Mm-hmm. Like they were not nobodies. Right. But they but also like, like didn't even have like one member who got really popular and did variety no. shows like a lot of these new good boy groups did where they at least had a person doing other stuff. So I mean I guess like big one is still chugging along uh-huh. in the rap game. Right. But like I don't yeah, no one really blew up. No one really is like the face of two four K. Yep, yep. Which is I think a very co- like two four K is co- other than the blacklisting part is kind of a story that you hear a lot with these K-pop new good boy groups, which is they trucked up like for again, for us icons, we absolutely adore them. They very much were very impactful to us, but I their story kind of happened to dozens of other people. Like, I don't know, I can think of like five other groups that in that era that probably had a very similar yeah. situation happen. I'm thinking like your I don't know uh map six my name His- uh, Hister- big flow History. big yeah like it's like there's a lot boys of boys republic uh, like there's a lot of boys republic a lot of groups in there in the new mvp goo. yeah like really that kind of level of k-pop boy group that like like i know about all these groups right i like them right right but like i I, like, I go do up I, to someone do I talk about people to know them. Not at all. <laughs> if I bring up, yeah, no, that MVP song I really enjoyed. Who? No, that Map Six. Who? Yeah, yeah, M- Map Six. What? Like, what does that mean? Hoops are these people that you're talking about? So, like, don't, don't like relax. Don't worry about it. <laughs> like, weirdly, I think I just named groups less iconic than Two Four K. Yeah. Which does mean we can keep this show going forever. There's always more new good boy groups mm-hmm. that we liked and no one else did. Yeah. So, like, I don't know. It's a sad story, but, like, weirdly, they were kind of more iconic than a lot of K-pop boy groups will even say. Yeah, I mean, the fact that we got them so early into this series of episodes, I think says a lot on our feelings about them. So we love it's it's that like, it's like, as we do want to talk about them because they have had such a, a bizarre career. It's a very bizarre career, but we also wouldn't talk about them if we didn't like them to begin with. So yeah, again, we bring them up too often for how popular and relevant they are. Oh, Absolutely. They are a, it's like, it, 24K is getting to the point where it's one of our boomer references. Yeah, absolutely. Like, it is a, who are, like, okay, grandma, fine. That that That's the point we're getting to with 24K. Because, like, I don't expect anyone to go back and listen to 24K. Oh, yeah. Even though you should. But we will give you, we will always Bangers. give out the 24K recommendation. So. Absolutely. And now this episode like, will live on the internet forever, so. Absolutely. Again, I hope for the best for the boys in current 24K. Right. I hope for the best for the boys of that left 24K. Yeah. A lot of them seem like they're chugging along. Like I think Corey's doing stuff. Right, I think right. um uh, the one who, big ones doing yeah, stuff. Who's doing, like a lot of individual stuff, probably. Yeah, like they're not. Some of them like, are probably like not gone. in the K pop industry anymore, and that's no. great for them. Like if they don't want to yeah, do that. I just hope that they're having a that they're Chan doing and Tan well. and uh, Tan's doing okay. I mean, probably better than two four K was doing, so I mean you know. It's better than two four K is doing currently. Right, right. I'm curious what the future holds because they it's been a couple months since peak time and they haven't announced anything. A lot anything. of the peak time groups did not capitalize off anything. of peak time. 
But here's the thing. Was there anything? I know we watched it, but was there anything to capitalize on? No, I guess that's also a good point in a way. Because, like, I haven't even heard anything about that tour they were going to do. I know. I think that was probably, maybe that was just a weird Korean tour and it already happened or something, but. Yeah, but, like, I didn't I even, even hear know. anything like that. It even, you know, I feel like nothing about it. the only people who got anything out of that show was Vanner. Um, and even, yeah, and Vanner. And even Vanner. Like, I also feel like Vanner took a little bit too long to have a comeback, so it did kind of, yeah. like, the hype wasn't as big Again, as it Again, I am very curious how Vanner, how Vanner's next comeback is yes, going to do. Yes, absolutely. That will really be the question, because I do think Vanner's might be able to turn this into a mid-sized K-pop career. Right, right. Because they are doing infinitely better than they were before. Oh, way better they're than not before, gonna be yeah. a. They're never going to be an A-tier K-pop group. But it definitely but they did. they can be solid It definitely C. did help their career. Like, it definitely, oh, absolutely. they got a boost from that show for sure. So I do think, like, that is maybe the only group that I can see getting anything out of it. Because, right. like, I will say, yeah, I'll say one group getting something out of it's better than what I thought was going to be the Zero. But that's... 24k 24k and what is currently maybe or maybe not 24k leaving it on a moral a we weird philosophical them, I mean, qu- question at, at one point i did call them fake 4k yeah we did do that originally when we saw them on peak time <laughs> just because you know you gotta say something yep 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 so we will get back to this series uh at some point next in the, year next year sometime in the future um, but we are available on all major podcasting platforms like Apple Podcasts and Spotify. We also have a YouTube channel where we post all of our episodes along with fun clip videos occasionally as well. And with that, we will see you guys in the next episode. Bye. Bye. Bye.